You are a member of the nasty party I'm reading this morning. No, that's not the case. I mean, the ads that we've produced punch pretty hard, but they do so for an important reason, uh, and that is that the government has a record. It's got a 13-year record. Uh, we talked about that record last week on crime. This week we'll be talking about it in terms of the cost of living and mortgages and council tax rates uh, and the bills that people have to pay. And the underlying point behind it all is we're not going to accept that British politics is just about a new leader of the Conservative Party every year or two who pretends that everything before didn't exist and that it's year zero. That's not the case. Politics can do better than that. And that's what these ads and our campaign is all about. Yeah, but you can't be saying that the Prime Minister doesn't want to jail uh, child sex offenders. Well, they've got a record. And, for example, if you look at the record on criminal prosecutions of sex offences, uh, compared to seven or eight years ago, uh, those charge rates are about a quarter of what they were then. So the record matters. Uh, and we've got to increase these charge rates and prosecution rates because right now there are too many crimes where someone committing the crime commits it uh, with the assumption that they won't get caught. And it's a double injury to the victim of crime because not only are they a victim of the crime, but they also have little faith that the person committing the crime will get prosecuted. So you stand 100% behind adverts that we've seen where you've suggested that the Prime Minister does not want to jail sex offenders? I stand behind uh, anything... Yes or no? that Answer, Anything. I, I do stand behind our campaign because it's pointing out uh, their record. We've got to do better and we can do better on charge rates and prosecution rates because we were doing better. Even seven or eight years ago, uh, we were doing better. And we've now got to the point where far too many people have lost faith in the criminal justice system to bring uh, those who commit crimes to justice. We want to change that and do something about it. And we also want to point out that things are much worse now than they were even seven or eight years ago. What are the no-go areas? What, what, which areas are just, like, just too far? You, even, even the uh, front bench of the Labour Party will think, oh, no, we can't say that. Well, we're pointing out the record. Uh, I mean, we've done so it... So no, uh, no, nothing's off the table? Well, I mean, I, w I don't want to put it like that. What I want to say is last I know you week... don't, but that's what I'm asking you. Well... Last week, we uh, pointed out the record on crime, particularly in relation to sexual offences. This week, we are focusing on the economy, the cost of living, uh, mortgages, council tax, uh, people's ability to pay their bills and so on. These are legitimate areas for public debate. And the really important point I come back to, underlying it all, is that we are not going to accept a political narrative that says every time the... Tories change their leader every year or two. The slate is wiped clean and nothing that went before counted. This is a Conservative government and British politics can do better than a new iteration of a Conservative government every couple of years. Um, pam uh, families are fair game, are they? His family is fair game, the Prime Minister's family. Well, we, um, uh, you know, we point out, for example, I assume you're referring to the uh, non-dom situation. Uh, you must be Sherlock Holmes. This is... This is this is a, a tax loophole that we think should be changed. Right now, uh, there are a number of people in the country who can choose in which jurisdiction to pay their taxes uh, by virtue of paying a fee. That's not an option that's available to most of my constituents. And if we closed it, we could raise, we estimate, over £3 billion a year that could be used for things like training and recruiting, uh, more staff for our hard-pressed NHS. Uh, this is a loophole that's 200 years old that other countries don't have. Yeah, but Mrs Sunak uh, is not a member of the government, is she? Yeah, she's not a member of the government, but the non-dom loophole should be closed. Uh, and if it was closed, we could have more money for our public services. That's a completely legitimate point have you got more for the Labour Party planned? to make. Uh, I, th I believe we will uh, keep up this campaign, yes. What are the areas are you looking at? Well, I don't know what's exactly coming, but we're going to continue to point out the government's record. We're going to continue to campaign for the non-dom loophole uh, to be closed. And we're going to continue to point out that the country can do better than simply a new Tory Prime Minister every year. So there's two. nowhere that you won't go on, the, on these um, attack ads? Well, look, you judge everything uh, in the way that it comes, but we're certainly going to... I'm guessing to, these kids are off limit. We're, we're get, we are certainly going to keep campaigning on the government's record. And, for example, 
the non-DOM tax loophole, uh, is a legitimate part of public debate because it's something that we've said we'll close in order to benefit our public services. Are these in house and by ads? the way, are these in house ads or are you using an agency? Uh, um, uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure. By the way, just on this non-DOM thing, yeah. you know, we do this at the time when everyone else in the country has seen their taxes go up this month. Uh, every one of your viewers is now going to see their taxes go up in the coming year because of the freeze in personal allowances. Most people will have seen uh, utility bills jump. The £400 a year that okay. they were getting with their energy bills uh, it goes away. It's a pretty sharp contrast okay. to the loophole that exists uh, You've given a rough, robust defence on that, and I accept that. Thank you very much for uh, dealing with that for me. Let me talk to you about junior doctors going on strike for four days. Um, uh, one of the representatives from the BMA sat where you were uh, a little bit earlier on and said she couldn't guarantee that lives wouldn't be lost. Look, I think this strike is extremely worrying. Uh, hundreds of thousands of appointments, procedures uh, and operations will not happen because of it, and that's in a service that's already under huge pressure. So I hope that both sides do everything they can to bring this to an end but as quickly as possible. Doctors say they can't, they can't guarantee that lives aren't at risk. Their whole ethos is to make sure that they protect lives. Uh, well, it's extremely worrying that a service that's there to protect us uh, is now you know, under such pressure. Uh, and I don't think what's happening this week is the result of uh, something in the short term. I think it's been building up for a long time and it's really important that both the government and the doctor's representatives get round the table and resolve this as quickly Labour as possible. Labour supports a strike, even if lives are at risk? No, we, don't, we never say we support strikes. Uh, we, you know, what we want to see is this brought to an end as soon as possible. Uh, and there's a duty on everybody involved to get round the table, have the talks, get rid of all the preconditions that have been stopping talks and make sure that uh, there aren't more strikes like this after this week is over. You're not supporting the doctor's strike? I never say we support strikes. We regret uh, that strikes happen. People have got a legal right to do it. But whenever there's a strike, it's actually a symptom of failure. It's a symptom that the normal negotiating process hasn't worked. So we want to see this come to an end. Uh, and in the longer term, it's not just about this strike coming to an end. We need to do better with the NHS. This is. Imagine it came to an end tomorrow. You would still have 7 million people on the NHS waiting list. What are we going to do about that? This is going to take time to turn around. We're going to need the application of new technology. We're going to have to recruit and train more staff in the future. We're going to have to have a real national effort and we're to going get to have to this service back time. to where it should be. It's good to talk to you as always.